There are two types of skincare people out there, patients, customers, etc. Which one are you? And depending on which type you are, what else does that say about how you purchase things, how you navigate the world, and how you see your own beauty? I was having this conversation with someone that I work with, and I was speaking about, you know, people who come in to clinics or to get treatments done, and those who come in from social media versus those who come in from regular patient referrals. For example, if you have what's called an HMO insurance plan, someone has to to go see their primary care doctor, have their skin, their body, whatever looked at and get referred to a specialist. So if there's an issue with the heart, then they go see a cardiologist. Or if there's an issue with skin, they go see dermatology. This doctor and I were discussing some of the differences we've seen in the people that come in, how they treat medical staff, what they do or don't know about skincare or procedures already, how much education and time there is, and what people want. Just the way someone who is a teenager or Gen Z might want something very different than someone who is a millennial or Gen X. There are differences in certain patient subtypes or certain client subtypes. Something that I learned about five years ago is that there are really two types of skincare patients or clients. There's the gimmies and there's the tell me's. And one isn't better than the other, they're just different. But they are fascinating and they say a lot about how a person approaches life or the areas that one prioritizes. The gimmies are the people who come in and they just want to be given the answer. The product, the procedure, the diagnosis, the definition, they don't want to understand how they got there, they just want the answer. And this is true in every industry. In skincare, it might be just give me a pill, just give me a cream to fix this, just give me the set of products that I need to use. But if you're someone who's overwhelmed by finances, you might pay H&R Block to do that with taxes. You don't want to know how we got here, just give me the answer, get the taxes done. In beauty, even when you get a manicure, someone doesn't want to know what the eponychium is. They just want the nail polish to look good. They want it done. And there's nothing wrong with that. In the realm of skincare, it does make a very interesting subtype of client or person because it's somebody that is straight to the point. Normally, these types of people aren't there to waste time. They're not always super excited to be there. They're usually very solution oriented. They just kind of want something done either for gratification and pleasure to feel good about, you know, their skin or to actually get a product or a treatment just to get rid of mild acne or to get rid of, you know, a rosacea flare or the thing that they're struggling with. Now, on the flip side, there are the tell me's. The tell me's are the people who come in and they want to understand why. They say, I don't just care about this product, but I want to know how it works. What is the active ingredient in this? Okay, I have this skin condition. How do I deal with it? In the tax situation, it would be someone who says, what is this standard deduction? Why am I claiming one deduction instead of zero or instead of two? They would ask deeper questions and they want to understand the fine-tuned details, the underpinnings, to really know what's going on and make the best decision for them. It would be like the example of walking into the nail salon and instead of just going in and getting your treatment saying, what are the ingredients in here? What is the eponychium? Hey, I have these hangnails from washing my hands all day. How can I make sure that these don't continue to stay dry? What should I use and why is that going to help? These are the people who are a little bit more research-based. They take their time with things. Sometimes they even take notes. They're usually the ones who follow up and a lot of times these are the people who at least in the skincare world or in the social media world There are the ones who are watching a lot of specific content looking for information and answers rather than just for entertainment in their own lives Or at least in what I have seen and observed They're also the people that go a little too deep into things or tend to perseverate I heard this quote from a therapist once that the people who are constantly stuck thinking in the past can lead to feelings of depression and having thoughts that are stuck in the future can lead to feelings of anxiety anxiety and living in the now is really important and for certain people who are constantly researching and evaluating maybe they're not taking people's advice but they're really weighing their options they could be someone who's just very curious or they could be someone who's overthinking things this type of person is stereotypically and generally the type that asks for a lot of advice from a lot of different friends gathers that and then makes their own decision the problem is that they piss off a lot of people by asking a lot of questions and not taking everyone's advice because you know everyone's weighing in giving them different pieces of information. Now, it's not better or worse to be one or the other. It just says a lot about what a person cares about. For example, someone could go really deep into skincare. I definitely think that I fall on this side when it comes to skincare and understanding my own acne because of the struggles that I faced and because of what I went through. But at the same time, someone could be completely deep into skincare and they could say, just give me the answer on the taxes. Like, I don't care. Or the opposite could be true. When they go to skincare, they say, just give me the product, give me the thing, give me the procedure, make it look good. But when it comes to something like 
an apartment, a house, or food. They want to know everything. They want to know when that house was built. What is the structure like? What angle does the sun rise in the morning, and how do the windows absorb that heat to warm or cool the house for thermodynamic benefit versus what is shaded in the afternoon? And those people who dive super deep into those things, in a way it kind of shows what they prioritize or how they like to analyze life. And again, we can be both of these, the gimme's and the tell me's, depending on where we are at in our life and what we are prioritizing. If someone has a lot of time, if they're naturally curious, they probably are a tell me type of person. But if someone has a lot to do, if they're very busy or if they're very good at organization and prioritization, they're probably more of the tell me's. They will find the people, the experts to do the research for them and distill that into a point that they can then trust. Kind of think of it like social media. Why do you follow certain people on social media? Is it because they're entertaining? Is it because you relate to them? Is it because they have expertise in a certain field and they help you filter through all the bullshit, all the articles and all the drama to bring it down to one point that you can trust? Or is it all three? Just the way we would go to an expert like a CPA or a lawyer when it comes to taxes or just the way we would go to an expert in the heart like a doctor of cardiology. We find those people who have done that deep diving research so that we can actually trust that opinion to make our own. And I think that when it comes to skincare and to dermatology, having that patient advocacy, understanding where we fall on that scale is really important. And obviously for me, I love digging into the details of skincare, into the science and the anatomy of it. I also love and am fascinated by the market research, the trends, the human psychology, the bullshit that brands try to pull right under our noses and certain companies and conglomerates and corporations, the way they work together to make us feel insecure or to buy the things that we do. But for some other people, they could care less. They say, you know what? I like that color. I like that brand. I'm just going to buy it because it makes me feel good. And maybe they go deep in other areas of their life, or maybe they trust the experts and they go on with their day. There is no right or wrong, but these are two distinct types of approaching a situation. And I think that when it comes to skincare, if you can start to acknowledge where you are, you can actually start to fine tune that to your needs and to where you are prioritizing your time. You know, when it comes to beauty, when it comes to pimples, they come and they go, right? Same with money. Money comes, money goes. Even friendships come and go. But when it comes to time, that is the one thing that we can't get back. And I think that if we are more aware of where we enjoy spending our time to research or who we can actually trust and who has that positive track record, that helps us make better decisions about who we are, about what we are going to do with our time and how we are going to prioritize things like beauty or finances or the place that we live or the food that we eat. And we can actually tailor that to learning about the things that matter to us or spending that time in other ways. There was a professor that I once had in school who spoke about being a lifelong learner and how being a lifelong learner led to a longer lifespan, a more fulfilled life, etc. because it gave people a bit of purpose. It had this spark of curiosity, but that being a lifelong learner only worked if you were doing that in an area that you were passionate about. And a lot of that lifelong learning benefit maybe came from that social interaction of having to trust other people, having to ask questions and having to dive deep where it matters. And I want to ask you very seriously what you consider yourself a lifelong learner in, where you think you could grow where you're interested and want to, or where it just doesn't make sense. A therapist also told a wonderful editor on our team to focus on pawns, not puddles. It's better to have a few things that are very important, but very deep, rather than a bunch of shallow puddles. It's kind of like that jack of all trades quote from William Shakespeare. It goes, a jack of all trades is a master of none. But most people don't know the rest of that quote. The full quote actually says, a jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. And there's a very fine balance to what we can achieve, what we can learn, what we actually enjoy, and where we want to focus on those deep puddles versus those shallow ponds. It's almost like Warren Buffett has that 20 hole punch list. Basically imagine yourself walking onto an airplane of life and the flight attendant hands you a little ticket and says you can only have 20 punches. What are the things that you want to do? What are the things you want to focus on? You cannot learn every language, every instrument. You cannot play every sport. You cannot have every friend or do everything. There simply is not enough time. So the question is, if you could only choose 20, if you could only choose five or even three, what would those be? Would you prioritize health? Would you prioritize beauty? Would you prioritize family? Would you prioritize a specific game, a skill set, or education? Really taking the time to ask yourself those questions can be difficult, it can be hard, but it can also be so important and rewarding because that really helps you focus on what matters most to you. There's a book that I've been meaning to read that I haven't had the chance to. I think it's called something like 4,022 hours 
600 minutes. I don't remember what it's called. It's something about like the 4,000 hour rule. Um, it was recommended to me and I freaking didn't write it down. If anybody knows the book, can you please tell me what it is? But it's this idea that we only have a certain amount of hours in our lives. And it's about making those hours, or maybe it's weeks, making those weeks matter to us. And if we confront that really hard truth, we can actually focus on the things that we have fun with. And for me, yes, that is skincare. It is diving into the science, into the chemistry, into the self-care of enjoying what I do and helping others too. And if you're fascinated now by the anatomy of skin or the chemistry of how things work together, then join that with me. But if you're someone who's just like, hey, I just kind of want the answer, I'm going to go. You don't have to use this for education or for entertainment. Go find those answers, then take that knowledge, apply it, and spend that time deep diving into the things that you love to do. Find out what those things are, whether it's a sport or a skill or a hobby, but commit to being a lifelong learner in that specific area and use that to make connections. Use that to have fun and use that to enhance your life. Again, the give me's and the tell me's are in both of us. The question is, where do you fall in the different areas of your life? I've actually left a little thing in the description box, a little secret if you have a hard time understanding this. There's like a little quiz down there. And I would love it if some of us who are interested in sharing kind of got in the comments, maybe make a butterfly pen pal and share a little bit about your puddles versus your ponds and if you had a 20 hole punch which hole punches on that ticket would you choose and what are the words on those lines that are filled in overall always remember to reapply that spf it's really good for preventing cancer which could technically help you live longer which technically helps you get the most out of those hole punches always remember to stay hydrated even if it's coffee and always remember to be beautiful both inside and out i love you guys and i truly cannot wait to get in the comments with you <laughs> love you guys bye